Good morning, class. I wanted to kind of walk you through uh, day three of the e-ceramics class. So as you can see, the agenda is here as always. And then if we go to full screen, I'm going to kind of walk you through. Do now please read and review all of the slides within the Google Slideshow that say day three next in the lower right hand corner. And it should say that down here, but my little video is in the way. So I'm not sure if I can move this around. It looks like I can make it bigger, but I can't really move it. Okay, so in any case, uh, watch all the videos embedded in all the slides, and then you will need the materials that were sent home with you to do this assignment. If you do not have materials that I provided on March 13th, um, alternate materials uh, will be covered in some of the next slides. This is the stuff that was sent home in the care package. And then uh, it is now time to put our money where our mouth is, so to speak. So we have invented a two-dimensional character, and now it is time to make it a three-dimensional character. And I'm just trying to time myself so I can make sure that I keep this video short and sweet. Um, so then uh, you must take 10 in-progress pictures. You were not going to do them all, obviously, today. Um, so quickly, over the next four class periods, which is this week and next week, uh, I expect you to work on your sculpture and take at least two to three photographs of your sculpture and then upload them to uh, the assignments that relate to that day. So we are currently working on assignment number three. So day three and third assignment or assignment three. Uh, and that it says that right there. So your next four assignments must be turned in each day, uh, whichever day we would meet. And remember that blue days meet uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays and silver days meet Wednesdays and Fridays. So you're expected to turn in your assignments before midnight on those days and not the last day, but each day. That way I can see uh, which students I need to really start to contact to see how we can problem solve and troubleshoot how to help you be successful as a learner online. Um, so if I don't see you turn anything in by the end of this week, you can expect a phone call um, and your parents can expect a phone call from me to uh, make sure that we can help support you in any way we can and that we don't fall too far behind because this is our second week of e-learning slash e-ceramics. So your assignment for today is uh, assignment number three. You are to take two in-progress photographs, pictures one and two. Picture one should be with your, kind of your setup, your station, uh, your sculpture station, and it should show me like the tools that you're using um, and a, a, an in-progress photograph of your sculpture and then a second photograph uh, with a little bit further steps in the process and you'll see what I'm talking about in the next couple slides here. So uh, then we go forward here. So these are two videos that I want you to watch. And I'm currently not going to uh, watch the entire video, but I just wanted to, you to see that these are two videos. Um, and this is basically part one. And then this is part two of Small Fry, a short video short that was created by Pixar. And what I love about this video is it's a perfect example of what we're doing where we're inventing characters. And these are all discarded uh, meal deal uh, toys, if you will. And uh, ones that people didn't really like. And so you can see that there's Neptuna and Vamp Vampire Express. Um, I think one of my favorite characters was probably um, Funky Monk. I really liked him. I love Nervous System. Uh, pretty fun. And then, um, yeah, I think those are some of my favorites. Obviously, Gary Grappling Hook. Without that, uh, Buzz Lightyear would not have been able to escape in the movie. And then I have some pictures of Boo because um, I am going to be trying to create a new character of my granddaughter. 
And so, uh, and then I was going to have her be wearing kind of a hippo costume. And so here's some of my thumbnail drawings of my potential character. And here's where we start to cover the alternate materials. So if you did not get to take home materials, you have the option of possibly purchasing uh, Sculpey either from Hobby Lobby, Michaels, or Walmart. Walmart might be your only option at this point. If you are still going out and about and getting stuff, I know that we are in the kind of stay-at-home order from the governor. But uh, if you can still get those materials, I would uh, very much encourage you to use those materials first and foremost over the Play-Doh. But then you could always make your own homemade Play-Doh. And the recipe is here. I've included it. I downloaded it off the internet. And if you don't have this cream of tartar, then don't worry about it. You don't have to make a special trip to the store. Um, it does add a little interesting texture to your Play-Doh, but without it, um, it still works just fine. And so uh, it is not absolutely necessary that you have those that cream of tartar. But again, if you are going to be going to the store anytime soon, you might just take a photograph of this and go and uh, grab that materials. There was about 27 of you that I know of that weren't able to take the materials home. And then, ooh, I'm not sure, I guess I accidentally put a slide in front of this one, so I'll have to fix that. But in any case, this is an example of Unit 3, Assignment 3, where you can see that I started to do my sculpture. I created kind of an aluminum foil armature head, small body, everything was attached. It's not, I kind of just crumbled up very slowly and kind of methodically to try to get it to be kind of a humanoid uh, characterized uh, baby with a very large head. And then here I am starting to put a uh, Sculpey around that aluminum foil. And then you can see here's a picture of my kind of setup where I have a lot of pictures of my granddaughter Kind of all around to reference as I'm sculpting and then I have some tools. I sent you home with a sharpened chopstick and um, I modified mine. I simply cut it in half and then I kind of whittled it using an exacto blade which you can see right here. So I kind of have a sharpened uh, skewer slash uh, chopstick on one end and then a flat uh, image on the back end and then I have a couple more skewers and some toothpicks but and a pencil uh, but those are the only tools that I've been using to make this sculpture and so you should be able to find success so uh, going back to the assignment then assignment number three is right here click on the assignment and then it kind of walks you through what I'm expecting you to do. And then uh, quickly, if you have not done assignments number two and assignment number one, you need to do those first before you start your sculpture. Assignment three is uh, ex expected to be done today, uh, but you have some catch up to do because we did have class the week before spring break and um, about 55 students out of my total uh, number of students did not bother to uh, do the assignment. And I get that this is a very unprecedented time uh, that we are experiencing, but we are trying to move forward. And I'm trying to make this a relevant and still hands-on uh, experience for you in ceramics rather than having to perhaps do some uh, ceramics history. Um, but if I don't get a larger buy-in with this, then uh, I can probably let you know that in the future we will move away from doing hands-on sculpture projects and I will just uh, start to do more of a theoretical uh, class where we do have kind of the history of ceramics and maybe watch some videos on different potters and then I will ask you some questions to answer and we'll just call it good. So I'm going to try my best to make sure that you are still experiencing kind of a ceramics experience at home. 
Um, but I kind of need to have more buy-in than what I've got. I've had less than half of my classes uh, and half of my students have participated thus far, and that's pretty disappointing. Um, I'm putting in a ton of work into this, and I'm even trying to do example work of what I'm expecting, which uh, most teachers don't do. They give you uh, worksheets. They know what the answers are, but they don't really... They might do one or two problems in front of you, but they don't do the whole thing. And I'm trying to kind of walk you through uh, the process of sculpture again to help you out. So I hope that you are enjoying this process. I hope you enjoy Small Fry and I look forward to your assignment. It is due tonight. If you are a blue class, it's due tonight at midnight. If you are a silver class, it's due tomorrow night at midnight. And then there will be a assignment four that will be uh, posted for uh, Thursday and Friday, and those two assignments are due either Thursday for Blue Day or Friday for Silver Day, and we're going to just kind of have daily assignments that are due each day instead of waiting till the end of the week because uh, it's not fair to me to be trying to grade things and for students to procrastinate and wait to the last minute, and so uh, like I said, a quick uh, review. If I don't see more participation from some of you by the end of the week, you can expect a phone call from me to help make sure that you have the support you need to be successful online. Best of luck to you, and we'll get through this. And I hope to see you again, but if I don't, um, I am trying to provide these videos so you get to see me. And uh, don't forget that my office hours are 9.30 to 10.30 each day and uh, that was posted um, right here office hours 9 30 to 10 30 and uh, so hope to hear from you or see you and we can do kind of a conference if we need to and I can talk to you uh, one other thing I wanted to discuss real quick is kind of expectations e-learning minimum expectations for Air Academy High School. You can see that there's a ton of things that uh, teachers are trying to do. And if we are going to try to start having kind of like a face-to-face -face, uh, online course experience, you can see that B1, S1 would be 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. B2, S2 would be 10, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. B3 would be... Um, I'm going to switch this from 11 a.m. to 12 a.m. And uh, B4 would be uh, 12 a.m. to 1, 1 p.m. Or excuse me, 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. And uh, so I'm going to modify that uh, because we don't need to have uh, a two-hour lunch in there uh, to separate these classes. So that's something I'm gonna mention to the D at the DC meeting today. All right, best of luck to you guys. Have a great day.